the one we are be all beholding as we arise to walk in his full plan and purpose. With this churches, this churches, we're imperfect. Tell your neighbor imperfect. imperfect. Tell your neighbor, including you. Including yeah. you. All of us. Everybody in this building is imperfect. Amen. But we serve a perfect one. And he's in the midst of us. Right? And everything God has ever done with the church is based on order. It is really time for us to get over ourselves and really find out what God wants to accomplish through us here and now as his people. Even your own body can't function except it function as a whole. Hello? Yes, sir. Your organs and everything, your blood flows just loop all through your organs, right? There are things God has called you to that you cannot do without being connected to something greater than yourself. Here's the problem, individualism, greater than yourself. Are we so insecure that we can sit in our sealed houses while the world lies in waste? See, that's my anthem. My anthem is that I know and I've come to terms that my life don't belong to me and that God has called me to be a drink offering. You too. That our lives are supposed to be poured out not just for our family, amen, church family, community, and abroad. Amen. That may include your job. But God called you to be a, a, an offering and not to just look at the world and, as it lies in waste. So you have to put on your big boy pants and get up and find the place God has custom designed for, your, for you to fit. Put on your big boy pants, get up, those on, I'm going to talk to the camera, and find the place God has custom designed for you to fit. The delay has been he needs a corporate body that will manifest him. <coughs> Remember we talked about it in 1 Corinthians 12. His members of that one body. No one member makes up that body. Please get that. When he talks about a temple, it's not just it's not just you being a temple. It's impossible for one stone to be a temple. It's impossible for a body to have one member to be considered a body. We talked about that, right? We have to take our individual expression and amplify it in a church. The bottom line is this. Church was not God's idea. I mean, church was God's idea, not man's idea. It's not a choice. It's his divine plan. So belonging to a church, getting out of my comfort zone, is based on God's idea, not man's idea. Amen. He didn't leave that to your interpretation. The, the scripture is specific on us finding a people in the earth that we can be incorporated into the life of that church or be a part of that culture because that's, that's, the, that's the key. And I ain't spend time on that, how to develop a culture, church culture. Well, because I, I don't like church culture. I like kingdom culture. Amen? I prefer to, let me just rearrange that thought. Kingdom culture because it far surpasses what we've been exposed to and it has to be in, in congruent with the scriptures. So the bottom line is that God is looking for us to be included into the whole. The whole. We need to be a part of the whole. We need to be a part of what God is doing on the collective body. Amen. We learned that in Matthew 18. He said, when more than you would show up, he said, I'll show up. I, that's my mm -hmm. paraphrase. He said, whenever two or more of you gather together, right? So he dropped, he's basically saying you can't stay at home on your couch. You got to find somebody else and touch and agree. Amen. 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 And people say, well, me and my wife or me and my husband, we touch and agree. It, you know, he says two. Well, Paul said, y'all one flesh. So you still short one. I know you never heard it like that. Right? It's just one. You got to go find somebody else to touch what you do. <laughs> so we got a problem because we're so individualistic. And we look for nooks and crannies. And we look for disclaimers and outlets. We look for places we can avoid. Especially accountability. Amen? And we live in this American society where church membership is optional. But according to scriptures, church membership is not optional. And most of the people who, let me tell you something. Most of the people, and I know some. My God, I was, you know, some of them I grew up with. And, and, and let me tell you, most of them, the reason why it's optional is because they have a lifestyle that they don't want to stop doing. 
And you want to add Jesus to your life. You don't want to give your life to Jesus. And so it's easy when you predetermine the boundaries on your relationship with God than going back to the Holy Writ and finding out what God says. What thus says the Lord, it is written. What we do, we'll, we'll fabricate our own level of relationship, our own pseudo-spirituality to soothe and say they ourselves, thinking we have a form of God, but we're denying the power thereof. And then we just think, say, you know what? I can have God any way I want to. You lie. The God I serve, you can't have him on your own terms. The reason why we have complicated lives is because we serve him on our own terms. It's not... Let me tell you something. We have storms, we have trials, we have tribulations. But in the midst of those things, when you know you've given your life to God, come on now, even in the midst of those storms, you know He's there. Right? Why? Because you know you've done the things that's needful. It's because those storms come to show you how you build. It comes to check the foundation. We don't look at it like that. Whenever something comes up in your life, it's to let you know you don't have it all together. And so that's the time you can say, you know what, I need a revision. <laughs> I got to go back to the pattern. <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't have that peace. Okay, what? what, 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 what I got to look up some stuff on peace. I don't have patience. Oh, oh I got to go. So those are the things, you know what I'm saying? Because you need the answers and the solutions. And it's in the scripture. It's not predicated upon how you feel. It's, it's too objective. There's too many variances. Too, too much, uh, too many inconsistencies. We, we need, we need some type of stability in our faith, right? Like he told in Isaiah 33, he said, wisdom and knowledge is stability of the times. Yeah, the more wisdom and knowledge you have, the more insight you have concerning what God's call is and his purpose and who you to do it with, Stability come in, right? You don't have to be second guessing. So we need to know these things, folks. We don't want to be a slave to our own interpretations. Tell your neighbor, I don't want to be a slave to my own interpretation. Because see, when you you a slave to your own ter interpretation, you become a fugitive. Yeah, you become a fugitive in your own city. When you start depending on you as the resource. Yeah. I can't depend on me. I gave me up a long time ago. Amen. I have to depend on the wisdom that God gives me. Right. So I have to refer to the manual. I don't know about anybody else. There's a point of reference in scripture. So I have to say, okay, God, what are you saying? Anybody else want to attest to that this morning? Okay. Uh, don't got to. But then, <laughs> because we don't want to stay at that point because... From the time we were born, we were on the trajectory. I told you that early on. From the time you came into the earth, through the matrix, through the womb, you you was in your dissension, decided within yourself, and then when you reached that one number, 18, from that point on, it was about you. Right. Am I right? Right, sir. And it's, that's what we wanted. It's just about me and what I want. You know, and then we start disconnecting all types of wisdom. And then we start getting to certain aspects of things that, that are counterproductive to us. But we need to understand that we can't be uh, allowing ourselves to reinforce our personal biases that's outside of community because God is building community. And we got to get this in our spirit. We don't want to be a fugitive. We don't want to be a separatist. We don't want to be individualistic. We don't want to be isolated out of community. The safest place to avoid you becoming a fugitive in your own city, uh, when I say city, it's talking about here, right? Becoming a fugitive, becoming, going into exile from your purpose, your destiny, is God puts you in a community so you can discover your destiny. Amen, amen. Please get this. Tell your neighbor, please get this. Please get this. See, and that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to get us to play games, hide, go, hide, go see. He wants to wander off. He wants to hide in caves. He wants us to stop talking to one another. He, that's his whole goal is to bring a breach in relationships. Yeah. And it's easy to become an in, in, uh, individual when relationship is destroyed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because most of us haven't figured it out. Many folks are, are part of a local church that are clueless to what community entails. And so we have folk that are in supposed relationship, but who are not connected correctly in the biblical sense. We have weak links, loose stones, not living stones, 
who may be with us but not connected to us. We have relationships that cannot stand certain tests. There's a test of, a, of offense that comes up to just to test the dexterity of our commitments to one another and the level of loyalty that we have to one another. Because once your, that, that link happened or that missing link shows up or there's a breach in your trust, guess what's going to happen? You're going to revert back to self-preservation. Once the pastor says something, once somebody in the church says something, in, off the top, red flags go up. And we become individualistic. And then we go into those caves, right? Then we start getting into mind games and the enemy starts setting things that will self-destruct us and not allow us. And it takes away our ability to trust and have, am I right? Yeah. And that's what the enemy wants to do. So he wants to keep us in broken promises. And the way he breaks our promises is to make sure that he breaks covenantal relationships. Churches is based upon relationships. I don't care how you look at it. It has to be based upon a uh, relationship. You can't, and, and even in, even in uh, leadership, I tell my leaders, you got to have a relationship. I'm not appointing people to a, a place and a position without a relationship. So I have, you know, I know I've got leaders coming in and leaders, you know, that's been here for a while, and, and but that's my thing. Because if you look in scriptures, it's always been, that is the glue yes, to hold the fabric of the church is relationships. Mm -hmm. And relationships is indicative, strong relationships is indicative of strong communities. You cannot have a strong community without those type of ties. Those are the joints that hold the church connected. Amen? Amen. And that's why the enemy wants to break covenant relationships. That's why the enemy wants to disqualify the voices of those that are around you, especially leaders. You know, I don't, trust me, I've been in your position. And when I was sitting out there,